Hi folks, today we're going to take a look at the pressure relief valve in a GHG-14 or a GHG-17 Detroit powered vehicle. Now the DEF pump pressure relief valve, it's a very small valve that can have a pretty big impact on the performance of the system. If you find yourself needing to replace one of these valves, it's not typically going to be normal routine maintenance that brings you to it. It's probably going to be troubleshooting, troubleshooting a fault code with the system. A typical fault code that's going to bring you here is going to be SPN4374 FMI0 and this is under pressurized diesel exhaust fluid system. This is a very common code especially if you live in an area that commonly sees temperatures drop low enough to freeze the DEF system. I've personally found that these valves tend to fail quite often after temperatures dip well below freezing. When these valves fail the system can't build pressure properly. Sometimes it will still build the proper amount of pressure, but it will take too much RPM from the pump to produce this pressure, and that sets fault codes. Usually Detroit's troubleshooting leads you to replace these valves as part of a kit. The troubleshooting will have you check over the entire system, and if no other problems are found, they will recommend you install what they call an RS supply kit. This kit consists of the pressure relief valve, inlet screens for the dozer, and the DEF pump, and other small bits and pieces including a DEF filter. Now if your unit is due to have a DEF filter replaced anyway it might not be such a big deal because you'll want to change it. But this RS supply kit is pretty expensive and quite often it is just the pressure relief valve that's causing problems. Now every individual piece in the kit has a part number associated with it but personally I've had no luck finding a parts department that can order me just this valve you always end up having to order the entire supply kit which is actually about five times more expensive just to get that valve. But maybe I'm just asking the wrong parts people. It's worth a shot. So if the valve needs to be replaced here's how we go about doing it. The proper way to do it as recommended by Detroit would be to re totally remove the DEF pump from the unit. Now this is kind of a pain because to do this you would have to disconnect the DEF lines and drain the cooling system and disconnect the cooling lines from the DEF pump. This isn't really necessary though. All we have to do is remove the pump mounting from the unit. The pump is usually mounted to the back of the DEF tank. These four nuts will remove the mounting bracket from the back of the tank. Once they're removed, you can remove these two screws that hold the pump to the mounting bracket. The mounting bracket can then drop out of the way and that gives you access to the back of the pump where the valve is located. Here's a video of it being disassembled. It only takes a few seconds to get the whole thing apart. And then afterwards you have full access to the back of the pump to get the valve out. Here you can see the pump assembly is still connected to the coolant lines and the DEF lines. It's removed from the mounting bracket and it's been pulled away. This is the back side you're looking at. This is a look at the complete DEF pump. Number five is the DEF pressure relief valve and it sits behind this plug, number six. The plug can be removed with a regular torque socket. Here we see a better look at it, and this is a look at how to remove the valve as well. The valve is just pressed straight in and straight out of the pump. The inner portion of the valve has threads in it. This allows you to thread a fine thread quarter inch bolt into the valve and pull it out. If you've purchased the RS supply kit, it comes with a little tool to do this. Here we see the tool with the valve on it and also a torque socket. I believe it is a T30 with the plug here you can see the new pressure relief valve and plug that comes in the kit and also the tool provided to remove it. And you also just happen to see a pneumatic switching valve up top there from an EPA 10 Detroit pump. They were very typical problems as well. Once you remove the valve some DEF will spill out. Just be ready to catch it or at least not get caught under it. To install the new valve simply thread it lightly onto the tool or your quarter inch bolt and pop it back inside the pump then install the plug. The RS supply kit will come with a new plug. If you're just replacing the valve and you're reusing that plug, make sure the O-ring is intact. Now here's something that I haven't even tried, so I really can't guarantee if you'll have any luck with it or not.
after changing a few of these valves, I've now accumulated two or three of them on my toolbox. And I've noticed that some of the ones that were leaking the worst, you can actually blow air through them very easily. I decided to try cleaning them out a little bit. I ran them under hot water and worked them back and forth with a small pick. After doing this, they seemed to work a lot freer and I couldn't blow air through them anymore. So I guess if you're really stuck with no parts, or if you really want to try to save some money, you could just try cleaning them out. Again, I can't guarantee that this is going to work, but they are a very simple valve. It could be just a matter of cleaning out a little piece of dirt or crystallized DEF and they may work fine again. You can try that at your own discretion. Now if you are replacing this valve because you've been troubleshooting an underpressurized DEF system code, the way to verify that this has been fixed is to run an SCR ADS self-check through Detroit Diagnostic Link. After the self-check runs, it will immediately give you a pass or fail condition that the system is operating properly. Here's a look at some charted information from Detroit Diagnostic Link. But if you don't have access to Detroit Diagnostic Link and you can't run this self-check, then letting the engine idle for 10 to 15 minutes with the system working properly should be enough to have the code go inactive. You can see here in this chart that after idling for a while the code did go inactive. This is what you want to see for DEF pressure and pump speed when the system is working properly. I've typically found that the system needs to make 145 PSI with the pump running at roughly 1000 to 1200 RPM. Sometimes you'll see the amount of pressure but it will take far more RPM to generate it. And I guess that brings us to the end of this video. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button. You can subscribe to the channel to see lots more informative videos like this. And as always, thanks for watching.